ladies and gentlemen, after this firework of uh, new ideas and uh, inspiration, it's not so easy for me to show uh, some technical aspects inside this direct dissolution process. Nevertheless, I will try uh, to uh, give more insights in the raw materials and the impacts on dissolution uh, for cellulose man-made fiber spinning. First of all, congratulate again uh, the <laughs> Professor Herbert Sixta and Professor Ilka Kipplinen on behalf of the whole TITK team for this awarding the Mar Markus Wallenberg Prize. Uh, it is a real good decision of this committee for this year. Let's begin again with this outstanding merits of the ion cell technology. Uh, you see again, uh, I have taken another uh, presentation of this process uh, to have, sorry, uh, to have this uh, cycle uh, idea inside. Uh, and inside this cycle, I will uh, speak more about this uh, interaction between pulp production and fiber spinning. Nevertheless, ion fiber are belonging, or fibers are belonging uh, to wood fibers, and the most important thing, not only is this very uh, prosperous uh, perspective, also uh, this kind of wood fibers keeps the CO2 in the loop. That's very important uh, for today. Suitable pulps, we have heard it, uh, are mostly made of wood, and uh, all kind of uh, modern uh, wood pulping, a sulfide process and pry hydrolysis craft process could be applied. We have also seen that other kind of material could be used, especially recycled cellulose materials coming from cotton or sun -made, uh, cellulose man-made fibers. And uh, that's uh, a very huge dis uh, uh, advantage of this kind of uh, direct dissolution spinning. Let's start with uh, characterization of these pulps in more detail. Uh, from lignocellulose and also from textile waste, these uh, materials have to separate from side components and impurities before it could be used as a pulp. You see it here in uh, these uh, uh, picture that uh, at the beginning, coming from wood, there is a mixture of different uh, components, mostly lignin, cellulose and hemicellulose, and you will end up in the pulping process with uh, the cellulose, uh, which is consisting of uh, macromolecules. Cellulose itself, it's a semi-crystalline polymer and it's consisting of chains of different chain lengths. And uh, for an optimal dissolution, physiochemical and structural properties have to be adjusted to comparable values. What are these comparable values? Uh, or even what are the pulp properties affecting the dissolution? On the one hand side, these are molecular properties like degree of polymerization, molecular weight distribution, or even the properties of the dopes made of this pulp. This affected more or less the dope quality, viscoelastic flow, chain, detangle speed, deformation, relaxation rates. We have already heard that these are very important uh, values, especially also for spinning uh, in the air gap. But also the chemical composition and the purity could uh, affect it, uh, these uh, dissolution behavior, especially if you think to a technical, to a more technical process, that means to repeat the dissolution and the spinning properties. And of course, we have heard there's a danger for solvent decomposition, and it is mostly caused by the purity of the pulp but also uh, economical values like recovery rate and uh, these uh, uh, very high economic efficiency of this kind of processes. 
Crystallinity or crystalline structure and fiber homology uh, are most important, especially for solvent migration rate and a perfect dissolution state. Have this in mind, uh, we uh, investigate the dissolution of pulp in this direct dissolution process. Uh, I have to stem at this side. We do it not in the same manner as Herbert has uh, shown. That means to use ionic liquid for the dissolution. We use the common solvent, uh, NMMO, and at any time we have calculated these parameters on the basis of a dope with about 12% of cellulose inside. But uh, we have also uh, focused on different kind of raw material, especially uh, these uh, agricultural residues, straws from hemp and also from linseed flax. The most important uh, area of uh, so-called soft or hot woods or even paper pulp and of course also uh, recycled cotton were in our focus when we investigate this process. That means we also focused on typical kind of commercial available pulps uh, for our selection. And uh, I will not go too much into these details, but uh, I will give some uh, more uh, parameters which are uh, most important for that. We have focused on a degree of polymerization in this range, uh, also Herbert has mentioned. And uh, we also uh, have this polydispersity, which is a very important uh, property of pulp, especially if you have these uh, for direct dissolution. You see, uh, we have uh, selected uh, polydispersities in the range of three to six, and uh, the polydispersity is a quotient of molecular weight, uh, f um, the weight average and the number average of the molecular weight. It is also our aim to have a high cellulose content, uh, higher than 90%. You see, we have not in all cases, and I will show that uh, there are also some opportunities if you not have such high uh, purity of the uh, pulp. Uh, we have uh, low HAMI content in the range of 4 to 10. Uh, person that is more important from the technical point of view because if you have very high hemicellulose content, uh, there is a danger that they are not uh, precipitated again after a cycle and so in technical processes you will increase this concentration over a number of different uh, dissolution and spinning cycles. And, uh, of course, uh, low metal salt contents are required. Uh, that means especially heavy metal have this, uh, this uh, property that they can decompose the uh, solvent. That's why they should limit it below 10 ppm. And the same is valid uh, for alkali and earth alkali metal uh, concentration. But here uh, it is more a focus of the uh, more easy uh, solvent recovery. <coughs> what are uh, the good opportunity to compare pulp dissolution behavior by its molecular properties? And uh, you're well familiar with this. Uh, cellulose as a native polymer is characterized by different uh, degree of polymerization. That means uh, different kind of cellulose or even of pulp uh, are different in their individual mass. Uh, uh, and that is very different from uh, the low molecular uh, substances. That's why uh, the uh, most important uh, parameter after degree of polymerization is molecular weight distribution. You see in the picture two different uh, kind of uh, molecular weight distribution of two different uh, substrates of cellulose. And uh, the molecular weight distribution 
describes this uh, frequency of all polymer chains representing uh, a specialist chain length or even molar mass. Number average uh, molecular weight uh, or even uh, viscose average uh, molecular weight and uh, these uh, weight average weight and finally uh, so-called centrifuge average of uh, the molecular weight could be measured by uh, the same statistic and that's why uh, these uh, values are comparable and you conclude from uh, the numbers of these uh, averages uh, uh, special uh, effect of different kind of pulps inside the dissolution. Uh, in this uh, curve we have on the left hand side uh, low uh, polymer or short polymer chains and on the right hand side the long polymer chains and you will see especially if we change uh, to the dissolution uh, these values are very important. From uh, these molecular weights, you can cl conclude uh, we have uh, here also uh, used these paper pulps, and uh, it is not uh, surprisingly, but untreated paper pulps present the produce molecular weight distribution. Uh, you see it in the blue curve, and uh, we found a way uh, to. Uh, degrade these, uh, pre, uh, these uh, paper pulps by an enzyme pretreatment to coming uh, nearer to the requirements I have mentioned before. For this uh, wood pulp, uh, you see uh, a moderate uh, or an optimal uh, molecular properties uh, and that is valid also for the hemp shive pulps we investigated. The differences between these two uh, pul uh, pulps could be uh, uh, detected on the low uh, uh, end, uh, of course, also on the uh, high molecular slope. Finally, uh, recycling cotton and uh, linseed, uh, this, uh, another group uh, of this pulp we investigated, show the narrowest uh, distributed cellulose. Uh, and again, I will show what it means for the dissolution behavior. That brings me uh, to a somewhat difficult uh, issue inside the characterization of the impacts of uh, pulp on dissolution, and that is uh, this uh, question of deformation or relaxation behavior uh, of cellulose dopes. Uh, for spinning solution, as well as uh, for ion cell uh, dopes, it is most important that they have a viscoelastic flow. That means uh, this is mandatory uh, for a process uh, uh, which is called dry jet wet spinning or air gap spinning. The viscoelastic flow of dope presents uh, these uh, characteristics of the pulps that they present different degrees of movement of the polymer chains when applied uh, strain. And uh, you see the uh, experiment which is behind uh, that you have a, uh, to set a deformation step and you look how uh, reacts the dope uh, in this relaxation behavior. That means uh, in deformation uh, the uh, dope applied strain and in relaxation it induce, uh, the induced stress uh, could be uh, de detected. Relaxation means it describes the recovery of the polymer melts or solution when deformation kept constant. And you see from the picture uh, that there is uh, in a polymer not only one relaxation behavior because we have different lengths of these molecules, we have also different uh, relaxation behavior. And that brings us to a very interesting uh, 
opportunity to characterize uh, these uh, behavior or these impacts uh, of uh, pulps in dissolution, uh, that is uh, the so-called uh, relaxation time spectra. We measured that very easily uh, and we could uh, characterize three different groups of uh, pulps. Uh, the first one, it was uh, the paper pulp, which presents the broadest uh, molecular weight distribution, uh, distribution and the highest viscoelasticity. You can see, uh, even if we have this uh, enzymatic treatment, we have a very low deformation rate and uh, an open relaxation time spectra. That means that especially the highest uh, or the longest uh, polymer chains uh, do not give any contribution to the viscoelastic flow in this area we have investigated. For these uh, wood and hemp dissolving pulps, we could indicate an optimal viscoelastic uh, flow. That means a well-balanced deformation rate too. And finally, the third group, where we have the dissolving pulps originate from recycled cotton and uh, all seed flags, which present highest quota of viscose flow. That means a high deformation and a fast relaxation. That uh, is very important to uh, take in our mind if we change to the uh, effect of deformation rate uh, at the fiber spinning process. You see on the sorry. You see on the uh, right uh, left hand side uh, a scheme of this air gap spinning uh, a little bit other than uh, Herbert has given. Uh, nevertheless, we have at uh, the upper uh, part uh, the spinneret where uh, the shearing stress dominates. We heard it uh, also from the lecture of Herbert. And afterwards, we have this air gap. And uh, in this air gap, deformation is more relevant. It becomes constant at the end of this uh, drawing process and the relaxation of the polymer dope set in. Low relaxation is typical for broad distributed pulps uh, allowing a spinning at a long air gap length. And uh, if you change uh, to a typical narrow distributed pulps, uh, it leads to limitation of the length of this uh, spinning uh, uh, of this air gap. And uh, so you have also uh, uh, the opportunity uh, to change it, or you have to change uh, in order to be able to spin such uh, uh, materials such pulps uh, as coming from uh, textile waste. Nevertheless, uh, besides uh, the effect on the deformation and uh, relaxation, you have also some other uh, parameter which can affect it, this uh, deformation process inside the air gap. And uh, these are typically temperature, of course, and humidity or the uh, conditioning uh, inside the air gap, uh, but also uh, the dope concentration could affect it, these uh, properties uh, in the air gap. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, I uh, acknowledge my uh, team, especially uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Kosan, uh, which uh, uh, she has also uh, she has uh, investigated all this uh, pulp and dope characterization. Uh, Frank Günther Niemes, he is uh, our head in uh, process technology, uh, and all the other uh, guys uh, for continuous spinning trials or process engineering. Uh, my Michael Sturm, that is our PhD uh, at the group of uh, Ilkay Kilpeleinen, and he is very uh, responsible for these new solvents uh, are used in ion cell. And uh, last but not least, all my uh, former colleagues, uh, those have uh, developed this basic uh, process uh, are acknowledged at this time. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.